Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. My name's Jared. Today I'm going to be continuing the series with the Hondata and the air fuel ratio gauge. So I've got a video on how to install an AEM wideband gauge and sensor, how to wire it into the Hondata, and now I want to show you how you can actually adjust the fueling in your Hondata with three different ways so easy to more difficult this video is targeted towards people that have put more new mods on their car and they need to adjust their fueling slightly people that have just built their car and they want to go on a test drive and make sure it's safe or people that want to just get their tune safe so they can save some money on getting to the dyno so they don't have to hire a trailer or pay for someone to actually drive it there. To get the best outcome, you really need a wideband gauge, otherwise you're sort of driving blind here. You can look at things like the exhaust color, whether it's black, the smell, taking your spark plugs out and checking the color on them to see whether you're rich or lean, but having the wideband gauge is the easiest and the safest option here. So with the cable plugged in to your laptop, gonna go ahead and make sure your car is in at least accessory mode so the radio is powered on and then you're gonna go online download and it's gonna download all of the settings and data from your ECU so then go online click that little lightning bolt and now everything's in real time then you're gonna go to parameters and we're just going to go to fuel trim and here you've got overall fuel trim so in this cell here you can just type in a value for example 10 percent and then just go the arrow to upload and then you've just added 10 percent onto your base fuel map and you can also do minus five percent if you wanted and you can upload that or you can leave it at zero. There is an option to adjust cylinders individually, but um, that could be a bit risky if you've got um, a different air fuel ratio in every cylinder. So I would just stick to the overall fuel trim and just adjust this based off what you're seeing on your air fuel ratio gauge there. On this page too, if you're having problems starting your car, you can also change the amount of cranking fuel you've got. So if you need to add fuel or remove fuel here to get it started, you can also do in that cell. So that's the first way really simply to adjust it, but you might find yourself having like a really rich idle to compensate for having a bit more fuel up top when you're driving. So just be aware of that. If it is really rich, probably try not to idle the car too much the next way is going to require you to definitely have a wideband gauge and what we're going to be doing is driving and looking at the wideband at the figure we've got and watching the cell as it moves on Honda and adjusting it manually that way this is difficult to do on your own obviously because you need to focus on driving watching the gauge and where the cell is on the laptop so it is better if you have someone drive for you and you sit in the passenger seat and do it real time um, or you get your passenger to do it for you while you're driving so now if you go to tables you can go view you got two ignition tables and low speed and high fuel high speed fuel so now it's on the low speed fuel map you can see nothing's highlighted at the moment and this is a 3d graph of your fuel as you can see along the top here we've got vacuum pressure so this is what your manifold sensor is reading and then along the side here we've got rpm and then this is the actual fuel value that was required to inject at that point in time so for example if you had a re vacuum reading of negative 15.6 and you're at 1500 rpm that would be the actual amount of fuel and you can see it highlighted on the fuel that's required at that point in time so go ahead and start the car
Now you can actually see this is the fuel values that's been injected at the moment. It is normal to have the car run rich at idle because that's going to obviously heat the cat up and get everything up to operating temperature and also your idle is going to be a bit higher. So I'm just going to let the car warm up first and then we'll come back and start doing some tuning. So as you can see here, these are the cells we're actually idling in. So if you wanted to adjust the fuel on your idle, what you could do is click and drag the cells where it's you actually want to adjust the fuel and then you're going to press Control and J it's then going to bring up this window and you can see in the first one it says percentage adjustment plus or minus in there you can actually type in the percentage you want whether you want it 5% or 10% 3% 13 whatever you want Let's just say one for example, you go OK. You've just added 1% fuel to all of those sections. You can also go plus, that adds 1% and then go upload. Or you can go minus, 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 that's 3% and you've just taken 3% fuel out of that section. So what you're going to be doing is obviously driving your car watching your AFR gauge and when you see it get to a point you're not happy whether it's too lean or too rich you want to find the corresponding cell so for example I'm going to rev it see how it moves so when you're driving you're going to find that it starts moving like this and say for example you're at 11 and you thought oh that's way too rich I'm going to highlight that remove some fuel or go control J like we did before and then upload to make that adjustment there and you're just going to continue driving watching that adjusting the fuel in real time so this is for people that don't have their air fuel gauge wired into the Honda all their air fuel gauge doesn't have a, the ability to have an output that can be wired into the analog gauge or you just want to borrow an air fuel gauge or sensor from a friend and just do a once off tuning on your computer. So now the next method is going to be tuning your Honda with your wideband signal into the ECU. I have a video on how to install the wideband and also wire it into the ECU. So first you can see here there's actually a target table for air fuel ratio. To adjust that you can go options, settings and target lambda. Here you can adjust what vacuum you want to see and that this is the crossover point on the graph of where you want that tar target lambda to be at. It will then go ahead and repopulate this graph for you. At the top here we've got the actual percentage difference from your lambda, from your oxygen sensor calibration so if we want 14.7 and we can actually see from here we're within 1% of target which is what we're reading here 14.4 next across from here we've actually got the air fuel ratio reading so this is what the actual AFR is reading at that particular cell and you can see it's close to the 14.7 which we've calibrated and then the actual fuel value which we saw before. So essentially what you can do is set up your target lambda and then do some driving around and you should see that this table starts populating as you drive around. This will allow you to identify areas on the map that require more or less fuel. Here you can see it looks like we actually need, we've actually got too much fuel in this section. So what you could do is select those and then go Control J, which brings up here. And you could actually go, since we're about 7%, 6% too rich, we could actually go minus 6%. Okay, if we go Window, View, Clear Overlay, it resets every all of the settings. 
sitting here stationary and revving it you're going to get a different reading for fuel than compared to if you're driving so i suggest you do driving populate this table as much as possible and then go back and make your changes and drive again so we're going to clear this and then do some driving So we just done a short couple hundred meter drive and we can already see we've got some values populated and for the most part looks like we're not too far off target. So if we go to the air fuel ratio table, we're actually reading 11 and 12s down here. So you could actually go ahead and highlight that, control J and actually add a minus a bit of fuel because we're then we're going to go view, clear overlay and reset it and do some more driving. So I've just done some more driving again. And now you can see we've actually got 13 to 1 instead of 11 to 1. And what we want to see is as we progress further to the right of the graph where we have more vacuum, which is going to be more accelerator, um, you start to want to go lower in the AFRs and add more fuel in. So you don't want to just have 14.5 all the way across. You sort of want to go from 14 and a half, 14, 13 and a half, 12, 12 and a half, and then if you're boosted, then end up at 11 and a half. This map sense only goes to 0.4 inches of vacuum. So then again, if you go to the percentage column, you've got all your values here, you can change. So here, so you can see after about 15 minutes of driving now, I've been able to get the map pretty much sorted. So we're at our 14 fives and 14s in this lower RPM and less vacuum pressure. And as we increase in RPM and also vacuum over here, our AFR starts to transition down into the 11 fives, 12s. So as you do a full pull, you'll transition across the map and you want it to be richer up here it can be a little bit leaner over here than the 11.5, but you still want to make sure you have a bit more fuel than the 14.5 you have around idle. So this isn't going to be something you're going to achieve in 20 minutes of driving. It's, it's going to take probably an hour, two hours to try, try and get this fully revised. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this short little video on how to tune the fuel on your Honda S300. I know it's not super in-depth or it provides heaps of information, but I think I just wanted to make a video enough that it's simple for you to understand and you can comfortably or safely adjust the fuel yourself. So it can save you some time or effort um, by potentially getting someone else to remotely tune in. You can do it yourself just to get the car safe. So you can go to the dyno or make sure everything's operating fine. If this video helped you, please like, comment, subscribe and hopefully I'll see you for the next Honda video. Cheers.